How about I go ahead and stir the pot a little bit to see how uh, you all feel about the red light cameras? Like, with one year left. Did everybody hear that? It was a concern about the red light cameras. You know what the hell? Red light. Red light. It wasn't the old red light. <laughs> you know, two years ago, almost to the day, Brenda Kleinheiner asked me this exact same question, and uh, I think you guys are in collusion, Tim. I don't, I don't know what's going on here, but they asked me how I felt about it. And the time I told Brenda, I said, you know what? If it saves the lives of a family, then it's worth it. But I did like I always do, and I went and I started doing my homework. And if you go to the web, the internet, and you start looking up red light cameras, the first 10 or 20 hits that you're going to find, you're going to find a lot of studies saying that they work and that they're the greatest thing since hot butter. But those, if you really look, what you find is those uh, surveys are all done and conflicted with insurance companies. And guess what insurance companies stands to make by the billions? on red light cameras. Mm -hmm. The problem is, it comes down to this, what causes a wreck at an intersection? If you go to the DOT for uh, Virginia, for example, or Florida State University, these are, these are organizations that have looked at this data, billions and billions of pieces of data, and they're not conflicting conflicted by insurance companies or retired police chiefs as in the case of New York City. That's been one of the biggest salesmen for red light cameras. What you will find is the thing that causes accidents at an intersection, and you're going to you're going to know this immediately. Talking on your cell phone, oh, kids God. text messaging, all right, or somebody that's incapacitated, and that incapacitation can be my wife yelling at the children in the minivan, <laughs> or it can be somebody that's had one too many, or maybe popping a pill, and that's the distraction that causes people to get killed and maimed in our intersections. How do we stop it? Well, I suggested roundabouts <laughs> about two years ago, and I was met with a lot of booze. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but let me tell you what. Let me tell you what. Roundabouts save lives, whether you want to admit it or not. It's nearly impossible to kill a family at a roundabout. You have to really be trying to hurt somebody at a roundabout or a circular or a 360. And they've been doing them in a lot of places around this country for a long time. I can tell you that it takes a lot of real estate. I've talked to... Uh, to uh, MoDOT, Judy Wagner. Thank you, Judy Wagner. Many times about this, she's all for it. Darren Lamb's all for it. But the problem is, it takes a lot of real estate to do one of them. And the chances of us seeing one in Washington, which is probably good for me, is about zero. What's a roundabout? A roundabout is basically a big circle, and you enter that circle. There's no stop sign. One way. There's, there's that's right, and you continue to go in one direction, so there's no stop sign, so you don't waste any energy at the stop sign. You continue to go. The traffic never stops. The only time that it will back up is if you had, like, an entire business let out, but it'll be no different than what you see on 47 uh, or A and uh, 100 right now. And so by the virtue of the design, it's the, the fatality rate is almost immeasurable. You can't even count it. So... You know, if, if you want the red light cameras, then you should really want the roundabouts. But I've had a lot of people tell me they're not interested. I'll be so. Well, I, I think I had the experience with some roundabouts up in Boston when I went up to Lynn, Massachusetts, where the engines were being developed. But the point is that even though they may say uh, the big uh, accidents, I agree with that. I can remember. Most people go around the third circle as if it's a NASCAR uh, racetrack. And uh, it, I think it really, it was very hard sometimes to get into the traffic. You know? And uh, I think one of the things about the thing is that really you have to drive the fence from that standpoint. If you do that, you'll probably save more lives than the red light cameras do. So a lot of people don't do it. I've got about, I'm, I'm now counting about, of course I'm kind of old, I'm now counting about 10 people that are alive today because I did defensive driving, and they didn't. Because if I hadn't, I would have killed them for sure. Okay? And uh, one was at a red light. Remember how when we were young? I saw that guy coming, and my light turned green, but he, I didn't see that car dip. So I didn't move, and sure enough, he went through that red light at 40 miles an hour. And I would have been killed, maybe even Regina killed. But 
Defensive driving is probably your best bet to really save lives, no matter what. Okay. Control the um, I'll just make a real quick comment. Um, red light cameras. It's uh, thanks, Tim. Uh, it is one of the touchy subjects, and and you know the, the reality in my mind here in Washington, and I'm not looking all over the state. I'm looking here in Washington. Is it a good thing or not? I don't know. I'd like to have another year out of it. One problem that I have with red light cameras. And I think it's one misconception is thinking that the city of Washington is getting a lot of money from it. We're not. We're not getting a lot. I would like, if we're going to keep them, I would actually like to see the city of Washington keep a little bit more in their pocket because we're not getting rich. We can't because of the contract. So you and, can't and that's do that. Right. But that's a problem. How that's much is it costing our city? Couldn't we actually get rid of the red lights and actually hire enough police officers with all the money that the red lights are bringing in for that insurance agency? You might be right. It's one of those things that we need to sit down in a room and find out. And just sit down in a room with a group of people and take a whole look at this. How long have we had it now? Two years? Three. Three There's years? There's a lot of companies. There's a lot of towns, I should say, that are actually getting out of their contracts sure. because it is costing their Absolutely. town so much money. Yeah, and I, I would say that's the problem I have is cost. Mm. Did anybody yeah, follow the money? Question for hey, it right, right doesn't quick, come Roger. into town. My, my mom and dad know. The no. who puts the money. Who of red light cameras. I mean, follow they the money. They lived in Plano, Texas. Got them in. They were a great big proponent of them until two weeks ago. No. Guess what happened to my mom at an intersection? <laughs> well, okay. I'll explain. She had a wreck. Oh, I know. But it was guarded by a red light camera. Well, why didn't that stop the wreck? The reality of it is, that camera can't stop a car from going through the intersection. It may give you a sense of security, but it's a false sense of security. It's not going to do anything except for put the, the, a lot of money into the pocket of Red Flex. And Jeff was exactly correct except for one thing. The city was going to make a lot of money on it because they used to nail you on the yields. And then we got that stopped. Because at that point they were going to make a lot of money on it. But now that since they, they, uh, they can't, the camera's been blinded in that part of the eye that allows them to make yields. And uh, I think Jeff and I worked on that to, to, to try to make sure that the yellow lights were no longer a ticketable offense. But, you know, it takes a picture of your license plate. It doesn't take a picture of you. I mean, we've got a judge back there. How are you going to give a ticket to somebody when you don't even know who's driving the car? It makes no sense. It's not a moving violation. They're not going to subpoena you. I mean, if you don't, if you don't pay it, they're not even going to go after you. So. Are you sure? Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Is, is that a campaign promise? <laughs> I feel strongly both ways. Hey,